welcome to to the webinar uh, from Quintype. It's a uh, it's a, a webinar on generative AI, predominantly in publishing. My name is Chad. Uh, I Chad Hussein. I run our international partnerships with uh, Quintype. I'm I'm based between the UK and uh, and Dubai, and I'm joined by. Uh, Ram, who's uh, Wave Ram, uh, in, in, there you go, you can see his hand. He's our COO, he's based in our Bangalore office, and uh, Push Garage uh, is also uh, on the line. He's probably okay. going to be doing some, some management and admin. He's our uh, uh, head of marketing. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping beforehand. Hopefully chat has been enabled, um, and uh, you, can, you can add any questions you want in the chat window and uh, we'll gather them together as a Q&A element of this uh, uh, towards the end of the call. Um, also, be ready to, to make some votes here. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to work, but we, we're going to run some polls during uh, the session, so hopefully you can all be ready to uh, <clears throat> respond to any of those votes. Okay, so I, I'm sure many of you uh, don't even know who Quintype is. Um, we, we are, we're, we're huge in Asia, um, but we're, we're possibly not a household name uh, when it comes to uh, North America. Uh, essentially, we are a publisher technology company. Um, we, I suppose I could characterize that way as we're quite, quite similar to ArcXP in, in, our, in our product offering. Um, Home Turf is the Indian subcontinent, but we're, we're spread across uh, Asia. Uh, we do a fair bit in Africa and the Middle East, uh, in, in Europe and the, uh, and the UK, particularly Northern Europe, and increasingly now in, uh, in North America. And I suppose the purpose of today, or, or, or the, the viewpoint, the perspective of today, is that we're in kind of a unique position. We, we've, um, we're, we're, pro we're a provider, we're a supplier to the publishing industry. Uh, we're a tech provider. And we've spent uh, most of this year uh, listening to uh, what's been going on. Uh, and we've been attending a lot of events, whether it's been in Delhi, whether it's been in Dubai, in Taiwan, in London. Uh, we've got a couple more to attend to this year in, in, in Singapore and uh, in Miami. Um, and I think we've got a particularly good barometer of what's actually happening in the uh, Gen AI space. And we wanna cover that before we get into what we've actually built, because it kind of feeds into that in terms of why we're building what we're building in the first instance uh, of uh, Gen AI. It's kind of a convergence of opinion and fact, some research uh, and a little bit of sentiment uh, as well. Okay, so this is the uh, agenda uh, for today. We're gonna to look at some, some, uh, some positive feedback that we've had um, from, um, uh, from Gen AI, the publishers that we've spoken to. We've spoken to the best part of 100 uh, different publishers in the last 12 weeks. Um, we're going to cover some of those concerns because I think there's parallels across uh, the whole industry, no matter where you are in the world, whether you're in Southeast Asia or whether you're in uh, you know, Central Europe or North America. Um, we believe there is some consensus uh, of opinion. There's certainly some, some, some consensus when it comes to action. And then I'll jump into a demo and show you briefly what we've actually built on our platform. Uh, and then Ram's going to take that a little bit further in terms of what's the near roadmap look like and what does that kind of future roadmap look like into 2024? Because the, the, the kind of speed with which this is happening is impelling us to uh, ensure that we have a kind of velocity of product development uh, uh, that has to, has to keep pace with the demands of, uh, of, of the sector. And Q&A at the end. Okay, so uh, obvious things here. Gartner has, uh, uh, has come up with some numbers saying 25% of all internet content is gonna be AI, will be uh, by AI in the next 25 years. Universally, from the people we've spoken to, that's a massive low ball. Um, uh, so, you know, this is the kind of conversations that we're having. Uh, just day before yesterday, Europol uh, issued a recent report and they're saying 90% of all online content by 2026 may be synthetically generated. And again, that's quite a scary number, but um, I think that's more likely to be the number from the conversations that we've been having. 
And a similar parallel is when we're speaking to um, publishers themselves, or certainly editors, uh, editor in chiefs, um, is we get this kind of emotional response. Uh, Elon Musk is saying, you know, AI poses an existential threat. There's a fair bit of fear out there, certainly uh, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, Satya Nadella is saying that we're not in an AI spring, we're in an AI summer. So it's really part of the mainstream. You should have deployed your, your tools and your functions already, and it's just going to accelerate from here. Whereas Sundar Pichai is saying, uh, you know, it's a pivotal moment. It's a pivotal moment that's as big as electricity and fire. I, I, I'm not sure it's that big, but it's certainly a period where it feels like that point where we went from print to, to the internet, when print to digital, where there's... A, there's something happening there's going to be a change and things aren't going to be the same. It feels like that. And, and I think in that first iteration, publishers were not very well prepared. In this second iteration, I'm feeling that publishers are a lot more prepared. Uh, certainly the publishers we're speaking to is that change is something that they're, they're embracing a lot more than they did previously. Okay, so this is some data, some hard data here, and it's from the Reuters Institute, uh, their, their forecasting and predictions and it's also from uh, uh, one IFRA report that came out at the beginning of the summer. So uh, this is only 12 weeks old in terms of its data. Um, one IFRA is saying 49% of newsrooms are already using Gen AI tools as part of their daily, daily work. 67% is from the Reuters Institute, um, which is more like the number that we are seeing from the publishers that we have spoken to. As I said, it's about 100 publishers in the last 12 weeks. Interestingly, 70%, and this is from the Wanifera uh, uh, research, and I'll share this research if you would like at the end. 70% of the newsrooms see it as a helpful tool, and that gives you an idea of sentiment. Uh, it, it, it's practical and it's helpful in this first iteration. Yet 82% predict there's going to be a change in role and responsibilities coming. Um, and uh, what level of change is going to happen? Nobody really knows. Is it wrapped up in fear or is it wrapped up in optimism? Uh, from what we're seeing, it's a combination of both. Okay, so what types of things are publishers using Gen AI for? Uh, well, let's cover the, this is again research from uh, the Wanifera report. Uh, text creation, a summary seems to be leading. Uh, the charge at this moment, and that informs us as a, as a uh, tech provider, the types of things that we need to build. Simplified research, taking large quantities of data and simplifying that, uh, or complex elements of data, complex data points, and simplifying that makes life a whole lot easier. And, and that wrapped into workflow efficiency or newsroom efficiency seem to be the top three points that uh, publishers are using. On the lower end, that personalization element just doesn't seem to be there at this stage. And so it's, it's performing quite low. This report is about 10 to 12 weeks old. And, and I'm, the conversations that we had was translation, uh, text to speech is going to be a big part of the first iteration of uh, generative AI. I think we've got a poll on this, uh, PP, have we? Yes, Chef. I'm just launching it. Okay, great. So if you could vote on this, and could you vote in order of importance to your newsroom, that would be great. We'll wait for 10 more seconds and then uh, close this poll. Okay. Yeah, sharing the results of the poll. It's a, it's a relatively even split. So yes. personalization, 17%, translation, 17%. Uh, Topic ideation, 17%. Content creation, text correction, workflow efficiency, simplified research. Okay, it's a fairly even split. Okay, maybe they're all important. Interesting, interesting that um, um, the, the result is not is not skewed in, in any way. 
Okay, so let me look at, let me kind of uh, go into a little bit of detail. I'll pick a few out here in terms of some of the things that people are doing. Zetland, YLE, which is a Finnish uh, uh, um, uh, publication, they're doing quite a lot in terms of text to speech. Um, whereas um, Sophie, which is the AI tool for the Globe and Mail, is essentially curating or personalizing content to its audience. Now, interestingly, uh, the Globe and Mail are saying that when they deployed Sophie, they had a 17% increase in click-through rates. Actually, it was quite, it's quite a significant jump in click-through rates. And they're also saying that Sophie is now managing social distribution tasks, that that might be the time with which they're posting on social. It also uh, saying that they're relying on Sophie to do headline optimization. So a fairly, fairly large areas that were done by humans in the past is now being done by the Globe and Mail's Sophie. Uh, the Washington Post has got Heliograph, if you, you probably are aware of Heliograph. It's a, a storytelling uh, robot journalist. It produced 850 articles in its first year. It, I would say that's the exception rather than the rule. Bloomberg Cyborg, uh, again, is a, is a data analysis tool. What's interesting is, uh, the prediction is uh, almost a third of the content on Bloomberg is coming through AI channels, uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. And you've probably all heard of Forbes uh, Bertie, uh, which is their uh, AI powered uh, CMS. That, here's the interesting result uh, from, uh, from Bertie. It, it recommends, it reads the journalist's content and it recommends topics and it improves the content for the journalist. Um, Forbes are saying that since they deployed Bertie, they've doubled their monthly visitors. Now. If that's attribution, then it's incredible attribution about the power or the consistent power of generative AI in the in the newsroom. OK, so let's look at some um, uh, publisher insights in terms of concerns. These are the these are the grouped concerns that we put together. Uh, one thing that came up, particularly in London and in the, the event that we attended in uh, in Taiwan was what's the value exchange in training AI? And that's publishers were asking that question, particularly uh, in London. Um, if you expose your content to uh, generative AI or an AI tool, how, how strong is that value exchange? Particularly if you've got 10, 20, 30 years worth of archived content, how valuable is that in terms of value exchange? And what it appears to be quite opaque at the moment. There's no definitive answers as to, uh, as to what, that, what that actually means. Um, is AI in publishing at the service of the audience or is it at the service of the publisher? Nobody seems to be quite clear in terms of who the primary beneficiary is at this stage. I can say what we're doing is that we're in the service of the publisher and they're in the service of the, of the audience as such. So we're looking at things that make the publisher's job easier and more efficient. Um, the one that's come up throughout is inaccuracy. Uh, so a big concern is inaccuracy. Hoax content, hoax images, hoax stories. Uh, those hoax stories get picked up by AI. It trains the AI, and before you know it, if there's a pressure to publish, then those stories will find themselves, disinformation and misinformation will find themselves within uh, the results that you would get from AI. And that, that leads quite uh, clearly into uh, another area, and that is virtually every publisher we spoke to said there is no internal regulation in their own organization about generative AI. And we've looked and there's very little public or industry bodies advising about what is the best use of generative AI. So it's largely an unregulated environment. And I would say that is possibly a cause for concern. Uh, the final point is job security. And that is a concern that it might not be uh, um, an issue right now, but are we training a tool that eventually is going to replace journalist jobs, uh, you know, a little bit down the line? And it's a, it's a, it's a genuine concern. So if we can, PP, can you put um, another poll up? And can we, can we vote on, uh, on this poll in terms of what's the most concerning for your newsroom uh, in respect of uh, these particular points?
last 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So we've got inaccuracies. Uh, who's AI in the service of? What's the value exchange of training an AI? Uh, is it concern the unregulated environment or is it job security as the main concern? Okay, yep. so we have got, we've got slightly more, um, um, uh, a different set of results. Job security seems to be quite low uh, and unregulated internally and externally uh, seems to be 57% of the answers. Inaccuracy performs reasonably high and uh, uh, who's AI in the service of that? That, that has appeared uh, quite often in terms of uh, is content uh, not created by humans in the service of humanity? So it's, a, it's an interesting one. Uh, so most, well, it seems that people on this call are not concerned that the value exchange in training the AI, AI, they see that it's purely a benefit for training the AI. So if you keep these results, uh, um, PP, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll recap them at a later stage. Okay, at, at the WANIFRA uh, event uh, earlier this year, inaccuracy was the top, uh, was the top result. So over the summer, uh, inaccuracy has dropped. Plagiarism, copyright infringement was, was, a, was a close second. And data protection and, uh, and job security is about the same as what it is, uh, what it is now. Okay, so is there, is there a consensus? And uh, um, it's hard in publishing because, uh, you know, it, uh, publishers that we speak to are, are as varied as restaurants. Uh, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, but we believe that there is a consensus amongst uh, publishers that we've spoken to when it comes to generative AI. Uh, the first one is, when it comes down to the mundane, the repetitive and the time consuming for a newsroom or a journalist, workflow efficiency is, is top of the tree. And that is a, a generative AI can do those tasks and they can do them really well and they can do them faster and more consistent than, uh, than a human can do them. And in many ways, they can do them when humans forget to do them. So uh, that has been almost a universal agreement that there is a place here to deploy very quickly the, the mundane, the repetitive and the time consuming so that we can get, you know, great storytellers to, to write great content, to write great journalism. Um, another element is the speed of with which uh, generative AI can uh, can consume and analyze huge quantities of data, whether that's quantitative or qualitative data, it essentially can do it far faster than a human can. Now, I don't know if you've heard the phrase, but you know, it's, the phrase has been said a few times, it's not gonna replace journalists. Uh, generative AI might replace the intern uh, because it does that job really, really well. And that leads into the next point. Uh, virtually everybody said, it's, it's a, you know, it's a good servant, it's a bad master. And, and what they mean by that is it might do three quarters of the task, <clears throat> but it needs a fair bit of handholding in order for it to be ready for them to allow that to be published. And that handholding is quite important because it feeds into the next point, which is what does it do badly? It does nuance badly, it does humor badly, it does satire badly, it does all things related to audience personalization. And if you know your audience and you, you uh, understand uh, the type of narrative with which they would respond, that personal element to it, the, it, it doesn't do particularly well. Um, the last piece of consensus is, and it may well be where the publishing sector is because we've experienced so much change in the last 20 years, uh, the doomsday predictions are overstated. Most people that we've spoken to as a tech provider to publishers, particularly to newsrooms, um, uh, is that this is an opportunity and it's an opportunity that we need to make the most of to gain a competitive advantage. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into a demo because I appreciate everybody's got a little bit of uh, um, a limited amount of time. Let me show you um, what we've actually built within Quintype. Let me um, just share, change screens. Hopefully you can all uh, see my screen as I put that to the top. Okay, so um, 
this is the um, uh, CMS from Quintype. This is essentially what a uh, an editor would see. This is essentially what a, an admin would see. And just give you a very brief description. Uh, content is coming in on the left-hand side in terms of sources, and you've got these swim lanes at the top. So uh, open, submitted, approved, published, rejected, um, essentially where your content is coming in and how it's being consumed. And, and what I want to do is open up a, um, a, an existing story. So if I go to, let me just close that. If I go to an existing story, so if I go to this US open story, and uh, what I'm going to uh, uh, look at first is paraphrasing. Um, so this is, this is really about taking large quantities of data and understanding what that data is about and then and repurposing it for the journalist without them having to do it for themselves. Now this, if you see this, uh, this story, I'm sure if you take a, an imaginative leap and you imagine your CMS, this is just uh, our CMS, our editor, we've built this story in terms of cards or sections. And it's a, it's a reasonably long story. There's, there's various elements to it. There's a photo gallery, there's, a, a, there's more text, uh, there's, a, there's a video in here. And there's a fair bit of text to finish, and, 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 it, and it's going on for quite a long uh, section. So if I wanted to reduce that down, or I wanted to paraphrase large sections of this, I can literally just highlight the elements I want to be paraphrased, click on the magic wand, and then uh, what's happened here is, um, I'll do that to, to that section there as well. What's happened here is that, so the content has been pushed to uh, an AI engine. I think it's GPT-4 in this instance, and it's reduced the content. It's been primed to reduce the content, but keep the core elements of the story. And again, like I reiterate in the previous, uh, previous point, it still needs hand-holding, but it saves you an enormous amount of time. Um, and this does a couple of things. When you're able to take content that has been used before, or let's say is a, is a, is a press release, it helps you avoid plagiarism because you can take that content. If, if we're saying to, if you've got Biden's State of the Union speech and it's particularly long, you would take all of that content and you could say, listen, paraphrase this content, keep the elements of this content, but I want it summarized. Uh, so I keep the, the, the essence of the story, but I can reduce that down. And this is what this is what um, uh, helps uh, you get more from less. Um, so it helps you enhance the understanding of uh, of the story, particularly if that content is complex. So if the content is complex and you want to paraphrase large quantities of complex content, you can use this. Or if it's long and you just want to reduce word count, uh, again you can say, listen, the story is too long. Uh, it's going into our newsletter or it's going into our website. It's a, it's a great story. I want it reduced down. You can basically just paraphrase that and then uh, and then repurpose the story very, very quickly. So that's the first, first bit that we, we've built. And this is actually production ready now. So it's available on the Quintype CMS is that paraphrasing of stories, of content is actually uh, available now. Okay, let me go back to the top of the story. I'm going to click this little button where it says manage and click on that manage button. So presumably I've written my story. I'm happy with the content that's in the story. Now my job as a content creator is to add those essential elements to make sure that that story is discoverable. And that's when um, you have to add in certain bits of information, meta descriptions, meta titles, and uh, uh, meta tags. And what we've done is that we've automated that process using GPT-4 as well. So if you look here where it says meta title and you look at the magic wand on the right hand side, uh, you just click on that. And then what happens is the AI reads the story and then says, this is the best, most appropriate meta title for this particular story. And you do the exact same with the meta description. It reads the story and gives you uh, uh, you know, a different, um, uh, it gives you a different summary. If I do it a couple of times, it's going to give me different options. That was a slightly shorter one. If I click it again, it hopefully gives me a slightly longer one. Yeah, 137. So it's giving me meta titles and meta descriptions specific to the content that I've created. Now, 
in our experience, um, we, we have many, many journalists using our systems, uh, using our uh, um, uh, CMS to create content. They're great at writing content. They're not so great at writing meta titles and meta descriptions and keywords. That bit tends to get missed uh, or is uh, very inconsistent. The benefits of, of improving this area to a point where it's almost 100% uh, accurate all of the time is the SEO starts to get improved and you start to improve your optimizing or indexing of your content, your SEO rankings in turn improve. The, the time efficiency just goes up as well. You create the story, you click a button. That's all you do as a content creator. Um, so you're getting, you're getting this purpose of, you're getting more from your content creators for less effort. And that's a fairly consistent thing. Consistency across your newsroom is going to be important. You may have some content creators or journalists who are writing content and they're great at writing metadata and meta information. And some of them write it in a certain way. Some of them are quite lazy. Some of them don't do it at all. In this instance, what you're doing is you're relying on a machine to do it for you. And I think you're going to get that level of consistency across uh, your entire portfolio or your, your entire your entire. Um, brand um, and obviously this includes this improves uh, your, your eventual CTR your search results start to improve because um, uh, search engines are able to index your content better so this is again available meta, meta titles meta description for your content for your story is available I won't steal Ram's thunder but he's going to talk about meta keywords as well because that's coming down the line and again that's just as inconsistent in our, in our view as well. The third element I want to touch upon is push notifications. So if you have uh, created a, a great story, and again, there's certain elements of what your publishing newsroom does, uh, but it's, it's inconsistent. Uh, that might be social posting or it might be a push notification. In this case, what we've done is uh, allow a machine to do that for you and allow it to be consistent uh, every single time you want to create one without any thinking, without any effort. So all you do is you click on the magic wand and it sets my title for my push notification. And I click on my uh, message for my push notification. And again, GPT-4 is reading the story about this tennis story and it's giving me the most appropriate title, the US Open 23, Andy Murray, Katie Volta, a great day for British tennis at the US uh, Open, six players win. Less effort, more output, more consistent results, better, better notifications, more timely notifications is going to boost your retention rates within your, your portfolio. So we see these things primarily as uh, newsroom efficiency. Uh, rather than taking away the job of storytelling, what they're doing is they're uh, doing the heavy lifting for the journalists or the content creators in producing great content, but also in making sure that that content and that story is discovered as well. Okay, so those are the things that we've built that are actually live. Ram, I'm going to uh, loop you in now and go back to the deck. And if you can go and cover some of the things that are coming literally in the next few weeks. Sure. Thank you, Chad. Hello, everyone. My name is Ram. Um, I'm going to talk about what we are actually building currently, followed by what we are planning to do probably after three to six months, right? Um, I have a small video to play uh, to talk about what we are currently building, and it's coming up. Um, Chad, if you mind going to the next slide and then playing the video. Yes. Writing stories can be challenging, but fret not. Introducing Sage, your very own editorial companion, powered by artificial intelligence. Let's take a look, shall we? Trouble crafting your story? Simply select the text and click on auto-generate. Sage will convert simple statements into quality content while preserving the original message. What's more, Sage can even translate an entire story from one language to any other language in just a click, ensuring the intended meaning and tone is retained. 
And that's not all, Sage is equipped to generate meta titles, meta descriptions, and even push notifications effortlessly, so you can focus on what truly matters, writing compelling stories. Join us as we embark on a journey into the world of AI, be it generating title and summary, automatically generating web stories, or an intelligent search. Sage can do it all. Ready for this AI revolution? Talk to us. Quintype. Thanks, Chad. Um, that's pretty much uh, what we're building. And, and you know, a couple of items what Chad was already talking uh, is also already covered. I'm going to add a few more items, which is not there in the video. Uh, one is this item, auto-generate. Uh, we are working on an epic called Autofill Fields. A uh, bunch of uh, features coming under the epic. One is this metadata autofill properties, uh, which Chad just demonstrated. Uh, we are planning for autofilling. I mean, we have already meta keywords, meta title, meta descriptions, push notifications, and social message. It's already a part of the uh, offering at the moment. It's already available in the product. Um, if you can move on, Chad. Paraphrasing is something Chad already uh, spoke in his demo. We could we should be able to paraphrase any given text, select it, and then click of a button, it regenerates the content, uh, which we already saw in the demo. The intelligent prompts, right? So uh, when we are, uh, this is especially, this is a big hit among the news publishers when we are talking about, uh, talking with a lot of prospects here. So, um, uh, you know, while the content is getting developed, while they're building the story, they can select a part of uh, uh, text and they should be able to prompt what possible um, uh, completion is possible for that particular sentence. And then you can give you a bunch of suggestions and you'll be able to pick it up. The newsroom should be able to pick it up from there and then make it complete. Um, that's something which we are working at the moment. Um, Chad, if we can move on. Uh, translations, which is shown in the video as well. So uh, we are working on, we are very excited about the translation quality, um, what OpenAI ChatGPT is giving us. Um, uh, literally, we are able to translate from any language to any language. We have tested with multiple language models, and then it's really giving um, very fruitful results. And the translation quality is really intact. Uh, that's something I'm coming up. I think it's going to be rolled out in a couple of days from now. It's almost dead complete. Um, the intelligent search. So uh, gone are those days where we have this ready-made elastic search uh, results, which may not give you the desired results based on the search terms. Um, so these the, the OpenAI powered search gives you um, very close to the query string what we are doing, right? The results are really desirable. Uh, you and it matches at multiple parameters the way the the you know the the nature of the content the body of the content uh, the search strings nature how what other stories the author has written it it looks at multi dimension of the query string and what is already written by that particular author uh, it gives multiple dimension the results is very very close to um, as desired by the the person who's searching the results are very promising with the intelligent search as well. Um, the tags are the most, um, I would say that the most famous ask uh, to whoever publishes we have been talking. The audience tags, um, usually the newsroom is really, really struggling to give what's the relevant tag for that particular content. So, um, and we're building a own vector DB to, to power this. Uh, what it means is once a long form content or whatever template of the content is written, uh, the newsroom or the editor, all they have to do is click up a button, the magic word button, what Chad was showing, and it's going to give you all the relevant tags, the best possible tags, the best possible headlines and sub headlines for that particular content. And, and it's, it's a suggestion and it keep um, the, the, the content writer or the user can keep flipping it and then figure out what suits best for them. Um, that's for the headline and sub headline. Tags is going to give you a list of tags, the best tags suitable for that particular content. Can you give us a timeline on that, Ram? Yes. Uh, the time we are talking about all these features are going to be, I mean, I mean, some of them are already out. Uh, we are talking about a couple of weeks. All of them are available um, uh, in the production line. Okay. Um, while all these, while I spoke about what we are currently developing, um, the this slide talks about these items, which some of the ideas we are brainstorming for the next three to six months. Um, some of the items are already something in a much better advanced stage in development. Um, the first one is 
asked by a couple of you know a few of our prospects here where they said um they write uh data they write the article in one particular form say a thousand word article or so and then on a click of a button they should be able to generate different templates out of it um probably a long version story uh, you know sitting in the live for for say a few days and then probably on a click of a button should be able to convert into a short form story or a visual representation visually appealing representation or the other way you know you 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 publish a small story and then probably click of a button you know represented in a long form story um and probably the same story can be represented by the tra trailer of a story or a long form short form article listicle stories or 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 what not photo video multiple templates are handy which comes handy in bold and and which we able to convert between the templates uh, with the click of a button analytics is a home turf for all this uh, uh, open ai products the 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 best what's the best time to post an article right so we we have a schedule feature um, so you write an article you should be able to schedule into the social post or directly publish to a social post then and there within the cms but this can give based on the nature of the content and and the nature of the category where they are posting uh, it can suggest you what's the best possible time where that particular article needs to be posted auto posted in social media uh, it could be probably it can decide and then tell you saying that okay it should be published in social media then and there or probably one hour from now where you know a lot of traffic uh, which it can probably it, it's suggesting based on how the data is consumed by which segment of audience and so on the possibilities are endless there uh, subscription plan um, the biggest struggle for a lot of our publishers who have subscribers or paywall in their system um, the dropouts and what kind of trend what kind of stories needs to be put behind the paywall is it, should should i put all the stories behind the paywall or should it certain sections um uh, from the stories or 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 uh, those stories which are matching certain taxonomies should be put those things in the paywall so um that is something a very big decision and then and then there's no right one answer for this uh, this could give a couple of suggestions saying that okay if it is part of sports section and this is the best time to 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 you know put it in this particular say if you have a gold silver bronze kind of plans probably put this in a gold plan and so on it also can suggest which part of your funnel subscription funnel um um you know it's 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 you know the conversion is happening more where the dropouts are happening is it in the top of the funnel or or, or you know middle of the funnel or so on or it's just before the payment gateway it's people are getting drop off those kind of trends it can analyze and give it you automatically and give you suggestions based on that one big area where we feel it's going to add quite a lot of value is moderating content um we have ugc user generated content as a first class feature in the cms now say a citizen journalism kind of um um uh, feature if, if a publisher is opening it up um uh, specifically a, a legacy publisher may receive hundreds and hundreds of user generated content user user submitted articles um you know getting created as drafts in the in a draft state in the cms and uh, moderating that and then finding what's the best content what to publish what not to publish is a big um a task assets for the newsroom uh, ai can help there and then and then decide what's more relevant what can attract traffic what can come trending and all these things and then give you the top 50 or top 25 kind of articles and then the newsroom can pub decide to choose to publish that after the review the same thing applies for comments as well um uh, if you have enable comments um, for user engagement for any article um i'm sure that thousands and thousands of uh, comments are are pouring in and and it, it's a full time job for a newsroom person to moderate and then decide what to publish what not to publish the traditional moderation tools uh, automation tools are mere a word search or a profanity filter kind of uh, uh tools but this can go leaps and bounds over that uh, this can give you you know filter out all the comments pick up the most relevant comments um they can suggest you those comments which can attract more traffic or trending trending content uh, and then you know suggest the newsroom to publish those comments first uh you know compared to the rest of the comments which may not be adding a lot of value to the content uh, which may not generate a lot of um uh, discussions on the article so these are things which we are we are talking and then we are still talking to quite a lot of publishers and then taking a lot of feedback and adding into the funnel as well uh, that's something i wanted to uh, quickly share with you people uh, now probably we should uh, chat do you have any um, last points to add to these things 
No, I think let's ra- let's round it off there. I think by no means uh, this is a definitive list. Uh, we're very keen to, we, we are a supplier to uh, the publishing sector. So it, from our perspective, it's these are the things we've spoken to an awful lot of publishers in the last 12 weeks. These are the things that I think will, we can build and we can have readily available. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you're, uh, you know, I'd be very keen to learn from, from this particular uh, webinar, if there's certain things that you would like us to build or certain things that, that you want us to look at. Uh, to ensure that you get that competitive advantage. Um, so let's open it up to some questions. It, 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 you know, uh, Pushkaraj, do you have any questions from the from the audience there? Can can you read them out, or or can we enable um, some yes, visibility? Yes, sure. a couple of questions. Uh, and uh, but as we are already nearing the end of this webinar, uh, but we can still take a couple of questions. So one of them is, uh, can you describe the sh- uh, social share uh, steps? Basically, the using AI to create the social post. Um, Ram, do you want to take that? Yeah, I want to take that up. Um, so, Ken, um, I understand this as uh, do you want to know whether social share um, capabilities are already there as part of the CMS, or whether the op- the the AI capabilities can help uh, in terms of social post? Um, do you want to? Do both. Uh, uh, I think do both, answer both if you can. Sure, probably I'll answer both. Uh, one is, the first part is, yes, we do have uh, auto-social posts, uh, auto-posting of um, into the social media. I, I covered that in the, uh, while I was uh, showing some of the features. Um, you, you could you could post directly along publishing the article or it, you could schedule that for a later stage as well. Um, and also we uh, are planning to integrate AI to dis- to suggest which um, stage this social share needs to happen. Um, is it is it now or a little later based on the past trend, and and it can suggest that that's something which is coming up. Um, okay, I think a logical step there it would be if you're posting to Twitter and you have a long form story, is that give me a Twitter article from this long form story. That seems like a logical step that we we, we should be able to build um, uh, based on the characters of the story that you want it to be. On your uh, on your Twitter page, so that type of conversion, large quantities of qualitative and quantitative data should be able to build to get repurposed into a different story at the click of a button, and then you've got a baseline to say it does that pass the the, the sniff test as uh, something that I want to publish. Have you got another st- another question, uh, Pushkaraj? Yeah. So there's another question on how is your LLM model trend? So I, I think again, Ram, you. Yeah, so um, we we do um, okay. That's a very interesting question. So um, a couple of LLM models we keep training. Um, it depends upon the feature. So a translation may work best with probably a particular LLM. Um, probably the autofill features a, a different LLM um, may work best. Um, in fact, we've been testing multiple um, AI uh, modules, be it Bard, be it um, you know ChatGPT, be it Bing any of these things. Uh, so we decide that based on feature by feature, um, and then probably we take feedbacks from our current um, publishers, existing clients as well. We have a client base of 200 plus publishers across the world. So we keep taking feedbacks from all of them. Um, and then I, I know especially translation features works best when we get a feedback from the newsroom themselves. So apart from in-house testing, we do roll it out for beta as well. Let's try and get a couple more questions in there. Uh... Uh, yes, if we, can. Yeah. we already overshot the time, but we can take a, a, a couple of questions and then we can pause. Uh, there's another question. Any plans for a newsletter solution with an AI personality? Um, probably I'll take that chat. Um, so current our current CMS has the capability to curate it. Um, um, you know, what content needs to go to a newsletter. Um, there are certain automated options in the CMS already, not AI powered, but uh, certain other automated ways. For example, you can always say that, get me all the stories from matching certain tags, matching, you know, written by certain authors. Um, you know, it, it's from a particular category, say sports section, politics section, but not from um, probably baseball section. So those kind of inclusion, exclusion filters um, based on certain trending information. Like, you know, can you get those stories which are trending in the last um, 24 hours or so? Those kind of automated mechanisms already built uh, we we don't need a AI there, but yes, we are also thinking um, 
uh, sending you know the other side right the delivery part of it uh, we're also thinking that uh, um, you know can we can we take help of ai here um, um, with, with certain texts with certain templates and all the stuff uh, it's not there in the next three months plan but that's something we are already handling okay cool. i'm gonna i'm gonna cap it off there uh, bush garage um uh, i've left our uh, email addresses up here uh, hopefully you found the webinar from quintype informative we are going to be, our CEO, myself, uh, and uh, our partnerships team are going to be in Miami. Uh, so we are going to be in the US for all, uh, an event, and we're going to be there for a couple of weeks after that. Then we're going to work our way up uh, the, the East Coast. But we're happy, to, if we're on US soil, we'll be happy to uh, have conversations with anyone in North America. But if there's anyone from uh, the rest of the world, we have got a team that's going to be fairly spread for the next uh, few weeks uh, across the world. We'd very much like to talk to you. We're very keen to learn and understand the sorts of things that you want us to build. Uh, this, is a, this is a partnership discussion. I know it's a webinar from Quintype, but it's a partnership discussion at the end of the day. So chat at quintype.com or ram at quintype.com. Please get in touch with us. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I hope you've had uh, a good session. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.